In this video, I'm going to show you how to play a jazz glissando, or gliss for short. The reason why I'm doing this is because I posted a performance in the jazz pianist group on Facebook recently, and it got a lot of traction, and by a lot more than I've ever had. And I think one of the reasons for that is because I played several glissandos throughout the piece, throughout the improvisation. If you're not familiar with what a glissando is, it's basically a string of notes that go really, really fast that either go down the piano or go up the piano. And in jazz, we tend to go down because you don't want to really sound like a cocktail piano player. You want to sound jazz. And you're not playing arpeggios, you're playing mostly scales and different types of scales. And in this video, I'm going to show you two different ones with two different scales. We're working on the tune, My Foolish Heart, which is a very famous jazz standard. And in that piece, I play a couple of them. So let me play the first one for you with bass and drums, and then we'll come back and I'll show you it. I've actually written it out, transcribed it, and then I'll show you how to play it. Okay, here it is. Okay, so there you have the first glissando in context. It's basically based on a pentatonic scale. So in B flat, it's basically one, two, three, five, six. Which makes a nice glissando. Uh, there's others that you can do in different scales and I'll show you another one in this video. So we're coming to the end of the phrase. We get to the C minor seventh chord and then it switches to F7. So before the F7 starts, we're jumping in on the end of beat two. So then you're playing a C minor seventh chord, and then before you start the F7 chord, you're gonna start the glissando, and then you're gonna plunk down one flat seven and three in the left hand while the glissando is playing. So it's starting here. ending on the sixth of the B flat chord, which is the next chord in sequence. So C minor seven to F seven to B flat. And the glissando is helping us fill in the space as we restart the melody. So C minor seven. getting back into the melody. So you're starting way up here on the G. And it kind of jumps back and forth here in the middle. Okay, so just your pentatonic scale. So the fingerings are as written. I've actually written out the fingerings for you so you can practice them. I don't think there's a better way to play those fingerings. And, you know, obviously the fingers are jumping back and forth, going under and over. Okay. So the one thing I want to show you before we move on to the next one is you can see that I've got like a 12 written underneath here. And I've got 12 here, which means you're cramming 12 30 second notes into the space of one quarter note. Now, you can't possibly count that. You have to basically follow the beat. So this is um, obviously beat one, beat two, and then this is on beat three, and this is on beat four, and you have to fit all of those notes into those beats. So you're never gonna be able to count 12 in one. It just doesn't work like that. You have to kind of keep the time in your head, and you have to end up on the beat when you finish the glissando. All right, let's go and take a look at the second one in this piece. So the second one starts off here where we're coming into the coda. Okay, let me play the glissando that happens over that section and then we'll come back and talk about it.
So this glissando is based on a D flat major scale. If you take D flat major, and the reason why I like that one is it not only fits with the two five, which is E flat minor seven, to A flat seven, to D flat major seven. It's not going to D flat, but we're in the key of D flat major for the moment and it just really falls nicely under the fingers. You're starting way up here like this with the third finger. Okay. I think it starts higher than that. Right, cool, right? And again, I've written out the fingerings for you, but it's D flat major seven, so not that difficult to play. And I think the reason why people dig these so much is because it just kind of fills in that space when you have a lot of space going on leading to somewhere else. So in this case, it's starting the bridge. Okay, so really nice. So that's a couple of glissando ideas for you. I know that it's gonna make your playing sound quite a lot more professional. Try not to play arpeggios like cocktail piano players. For example, E flat minor seven, changing to the A flat seven. A lot of times you might hear a cocktail piano player do something like this. And it's not nearly as nice as coming down and playing lots more notes. It's a little more impressive and it doesn't have that hollow sound like triads do. And I, I really don't like when piano players just do things like this. I mean, just triads, it just sounds so, I don't know, corny, if you will. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is play the entire piece improvised. It is my foolish heart. I'm gonna throw in these glissandos and I'm gonna play along with bass and drums. And then when I come back, I'm gonna throw up a link to the sheet music that you can download and it'll have the full transcription of the head. And then I'm gonna play a chorus of solo. I didn't transcribe that, but I did transcribe, like I said, the glissandos. And so I'm gonna post a link to those as well. Okay, let me play it for you and we'll come right back.
Okay, so let me put a link to the sheet music up here in the corner. You can go and download that along with the backing track, bass and drums, so you can practice along. And I'm also going to, uh, with that link, give you the other sheet music for the glissandos. The two are separate, but you can get them all with that one download. Okay, thanks so much for your time. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we'd love to have you if you're a musician and you're looking for lots of great ideas on how to be a better jazz piano player or jazz instrumentalist. It doesn't really matter what instrument you're playing or even bass and drums. You're most welcome here to these videos. They're helpful, I think, for all jazz musicians. Okay, thanks for your time. We'll see you in the next video.